Welcome to the Human Era Podcast, a show where we discuss the future of humans in a world that is dominated by technology. What does tomorrow look like and how can we stay true to what we really are, humans? Thank you for tuning in to a new episode of the Human Era Podcast. And today I am joined by Kesha Novak. Kesha, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thanks. It's a pleasure having you today. Could you do us a favor and introduce yourself? So yeah, so my name is Kasia. I was born and raised in Poland, but decided to move to England and I've been living there for 15 years. And then at the later stage of my 20s, I decided I'm going to become an astrophysicist. So now I'm a PhD researcher <laughs> in astrophysics. <laughs> Actually, like I started, uh, my first degree was in music um, and media management, but didn't really suit me so you decided to <laughs> yeah. switch uh, to switch yes. what, what, what made you decide to switch why why astrophysics oh, oh my god are you ready for the long story yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh so yeah like i actually my first proper job that was still back in poland was in cement plant uh it was an internship so and I was doing admin at the reception. So I like there was a lot of people walking by and then, you know, like using those like technical jargon. And I thought, oh, I hate the fact that I don't understand anything what they say. So I start asking questions, learning about like how the cement plant works and then to like month in and I knew everything about it. And then back then they told me like, you really should be thinking about doing something, I don't know, either with like technical stuff or science. So then I moved to England and I thought, oh, I really like music, I wanna be a tour manager. And then I went to study music and media management. I've done a couple internships in States, some of them in England, and I absolutely hated it. <laughs> I hated it, but I was telling, you know, when you're young, you tell yourself, no, it's cool. You should, you should like, no, it's cool. It's, it's cool to be a tour manager or band manager. I've never really been on the tour, but I've, <laughs> uh, I've helped manage some of the bands or like organize events. And I, I've hated it. I hated it, this whole show business culture. And then, and it's also the way they treat women. Like that was my first time I've experienced like a verbal sexual harassment or whatever you call it. And oh, wow. it's, it's um, you know, it's quite shocking for young women, but I don't, everything I hated about it. And then I came back and I was at this point of my life when I thought what I'm going to do with myself. Uh, and then I just, um, I just thought, I'm like, okay, what did I really enjoy? And it was really that first job. And I started researching and I thought about chemistry, but then I started researching what kind of jobs I could do after that. And I didn't really fancy being in a lab all day long. Um, and then I found, oh, let me do physics because it sounds really hard. And I think if I put my mind into it, I can understand that. And yeah, so I then I thought, oh, there's this thing called astrophysics. So yeah, decided to do that. <laughs> it sounds and so here random. I am after it's probably was the most challenging thing I've done and challenging in the sense of not even studying it but also as a second degree you don't get a student loan so you have to pay for it and in the UK mm. it's like nine thousand pounds per year so I had to work full-time study full-time and that was probably the hardest part of my life <laughs> so far <laughs> and I can't believe I've managed to do that so I, yeah but you've got a great commitment, right? Because, well, there, there's a lot of fee on it. Um, yes. But, but what, what is the most interesting part about doing this? Um, do you know what? It's, it's just the fact that uh, every day you learn something. And at the same time, you feel like you're more stupid than you were the day before. <laughs> it, it's just, I feel, I, when I've graduated from bachelor, I felt this like, I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing about physics, nothing. I'm so stupid. And then um, the the senior lecturers were telling me, no, that's completely normal. You're not meant to understand everything. You're meant to know like, oh, there is this thing somewhere out there and I know where to find it and how to use it. And I guess only when you start teaching, that's when you really probably understand the concept. But it's just, it's just the fact that you learn every day something, every day and, I mean, there's, I mean, you look at the sky, you can't even imagine what is out there and you can't even imagine what, the, the, there's so many things that we don't even know that it's out there. 
and it's already i don't i don't know if you have the same thing but the more you learn the more you think oh gosh i'm so dumb actually so like it's just i don't know nothing almost nothing it, it's just such a mishmash in my head and i don't know maybe it's just the way i learn maybe it's just structure it more but i don't know i i, I like i've always I don't know. I do, do quite like people that openly say, oh, yeah, no, I don't know much. Like they say this thing about like quantum physics. If someone say to you they understand quantum physics, that's like bullshit. They don't understand. <laughs> like, you're not meant to understand quantum physics. It's like counterintuitive. It's, it's yeah, no one understands that. So basically, the, the more you work in it, the more questions you have rather than answers. Yeah, but that's the whole point, because if you feel like you understand everything, then then that's it you're you're stuck you're you're not progressing like the whole point of science is like let's say i will i'll come up with some conclusion i will publish my paper and and then you know it's not like no one else will question it or will do another research and say well wait a minute some of your uh, results are not right or your assumptions were not wrong and then that's how you move forward. And I'm also the scientist when someone come up and say like, look, there is something wrong with your paper or you have not included this day. They, they often then collaborate on the new paper. And I think, I think you just always have to move forward. And yeah, it's, I think it's with anything. If you think you know everything, you're not really learning anything new. True. I mean, the world is like evolving way too fast. <laughs> To be, like to be like thinking that okay yeah I know I know everything in my area yeah no, there's, oh, there's too much going on to know everything right no no <laughs> no when it's like and there is this problem like sometimes uh, because I just started my PhD and then you know when there's some of the meetings and then we were actually having this conversation a couple of days ago at the university that some people just throw buzzwords. And everyone think, oh, they know what they're talking about and I don't know nothing, therefore I'm going to shut up. And then I just realized that, do they actually understand the topic or they're just trying to cover up with some buzzwords? And so yeah, like one of the things that I've promised to myself this year, is even if it's a stupid question, I would just raise my hand and ask this. Because otherwise there's probably half of the room have the same question, but no one is willing to ask it because they just think that, oh, if I ask, I will sound like I'm stupid. But it's yeah. not because it's if someone does certain area of astrophysics, the other people don't know nothing, like most of the stuff about it. So, yeah, okay. There's a, there's a famous <laughs> saying, right? I, I'm not sure who it's from, but he, he says, um, if you ask a question, you may sound stupid for a second, but if you don't ask the question, you'll be stupid for your entire life because yeah. you're never going to get the answer. But yeah. People are ashamed to ask questions because it makes them feel that they know nothing, but it's it's okay to know s something about your niche, but not everything about... Like you said, there you cannot know everything, so that's perfectly fine. But people feel like they know everything and they need to show that they know everything, but that's not how it works. Yeah, no, it does... Um... And there's this another thing of uh, which is really annoying me is people who use those um, sophisticated words and language to sound like they are smart or the or, or I just I, I, I look like most of the times I don't even focus on what they are saying. I just don't like what are you talking about? There is a way to structure your question or answer in the simplest way. Like I think like one of the smartest people like I've I've seen or like I watch on YouTube, they use simple words, short sentences, and that's it. Like it's it's their purpose is to for people to understand what they are saying. Not use some sophisticated language or like, oh, just so I sound like I'm very intelligent. And but that's often it's to cover up that they don't know the specifics. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's why I feel like if I start using it, then I think, okay, I do not understand the topic. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> and I try to sound like, yeah, and then I'm like, duh, 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 duh. <laughs> Like, I understand why some people are doing it. I'm probably guilty of doing it sometimes just to cover up and, and disappear <laughs> if I'm questioned. But sometimes it's fine. Sometimes it's fine. You have to. Yeah, I think it's just easier way to say, I do not understand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or oh, can you rephrase it or stuff like that?
You've yeah. seen it so often. I've, I've seen it in my, in my line of work so many times, especially in like marketing and growth hacking. Like people use buzzwords and terms. But if you ask a question like, okay, but what does that mean? Like physically, what does it mean? They don't have the answer. And that's when they like fall through and, and they have to admit that they don't know the specifics. Um, but they just use the words in, in the hopes that you are impressed by those words and think, wow, they must know so much. But in fact, they don't know the basics. And, and like you said, people who use like simple language, um, they are the ones that are the experts and they usually have all the answers. Yeah, no, exactly. I had this like, um, when I was being interviewed for a PhD at a different institute, um, they asked me something about my research that I use a lot. And then I can, but what is that? And I was stuck. <laughs> I thought, oh gosh, you got me here. <laughs> and then I thought, I came out of it. I thought, God, I don't know the basic thing about my research. How bad is that? <laughs> like, I don't focus on like nailing the details. And that's the problem. That's the problem. Like, and I think uh, that's the problem with a lot of people who are finishing degree. They don't really focus on the details and understanding. They're just, okay, up to next exam, down, 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 next exam, da, 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 da. Like I was guilty of doing this. Oh my God. I think that's also how the system works, right? Because there's a lot of time pressure um, and you need to know so many topics. You need to know so many things. Um, so I think that that just comes with how the system works. Um, yeah, that's because if you if, once you start working, then you look at the details, right? Because then you want to know everything about the specifics that you're researching. Uh, but when you're studying, then you need to know so much, you need to please so many people. I think it just naturally uh, you you skip the details just to make sure you get the deadlines. Yeah, but that's like another like another topic of education, even how bad the whole system is. Like we are not mm -hmm. taught like how to study. There's a different way, like different people study differently. I mean, it's um, at school, I, I hated physics. I didn't understand anything. I barely pass. The only thing that I remember from physics in high school is that the teacher knew how to draw like circle without like, like perfectly on the board. That's it. That's the only thing I remember. From. <laughs> <laughs> so people in my high school, when they hear that I'm doing a PhD in astrophysics, they think, what? You? I was failing math, everything. Because I just hated it. I hated it. The teacher made, like, I hated it. it, it's it just... Now it's your own choice, right? I think that makes the, a lot of difference. Yeah, it, it's exactly. And it's the same thing with history. Like, who liked history at school? Hmm. I don't know <laughs> anyone who liked it. <laughs> and now I love history. I, I read history books. I love it. And I think, <laughs> how come no one, like, there's a way to teach it in a, such an interesting way. It, it, I think the power is in teachers' hands of... You know, if the kid likes the subject or not, like how they teach it, it it's it's often the test, yeah. Duh, 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 test. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, remember that in I don't know fourteen something there was a I don't know battle or something. <laughs> yeah, fourteen something by some king, some Louis the Third or something. Yeah, yeah I, I know. I, I I remember that when um when I went to I think it's called vocational. Uh, education that um, I, I left high school um, thinking that all the teachers were uh, created as teachers. They had no experience in the field because they were working their whole lives in school and they were just telling stories from the books. And once I went into um, like vocational, I, I noticed that some of them were hired from the working forces from from you know the areas that they studied and they worked in um so they had experience and and stories that they could tell like i worked there and there and um this is what happened and i had one particular guy who um who worked at i think it was like one of the telephone providers that we have in the netherlands um and he used to be in marketing and he could actually tell stories from his own experience working in marketing teaching us about marketing, uh, which made it so much more relevant than just like getting the story secondhand, which was already in our books. Uh, because in high school, I felt like I could just read my book and get the same information with the same lack of emotions. Um, and then when we went into um, the details with, with this particular teacher, uh, we could ask questions about his skills and his own experience, which made it more lively, um, which then made it stuck with me, uh, which is also why I eventually went to work in marketing because I felt more connected to that specific part because that teacher was so gifted um, in, in combining his experience with the, th the theory uh, which made it stuck while we had teachers who were doing mathematics and history they were they were just 
boring <laughs> to be honest uh that's why it didn't stuck to me yeah uh, and, and like you said i have the same right now I'm, i'm reading all types of books in things that i used to fail at um I used to fail at mathematics and uh, business economics. I run two businesses right now where I do the economics behind it and I enjoy it because I understand it. Um, but I also think that it's because I'm now cherry picking. Because um, in high school, I had to learn like nine or 10 or 11 subjects. Now I'm like, okay, I'm interested in learning how my business works, how the numbers work. Let me get into it. Let me understand it because it's now also for myself. I need to understand it because I need to run my business and I need to know how it works. Even though I failed it in high school, I understand it perfectly now. But it, that's just because it's one, it's cherry picking. And for the other parts, it's teachers who had the gift of explaining and really teaching rather than just, um, you, you know, basically telling what the books are already telling us. No, exactly. I think it's a major difference. And then another thing is, I think it's quite important that, you know, if um, doing unpaid internships or, you know, like, or even paid internships, like a short ones, because... I, if I didn't do that in my first degree, uh, I wouldn't know what the business is like. And I would be probably in denial that, oh gosh, it's, it's really cool to work in the music industry and be surrounded by famous people, which actually it's not. They are just a normal people. Some of them are assholes. They're just dumb. <laughs> you, you don't want to be even surrounded by them. And some of the people that work in the music industry, it's, it's horrible. And I mean, it's probably going to change now, but like, Music industry is one of the most backwards industry right now. It's it's almost like it's stuck in the 90s still. Uh, and then it's and then another thing I think is a lot of people what I see young people they just want to go straight from high school or college to university just doing any degree. That's the problem in Poland. Any degree because everyone has a degree. Now everyone has a degree. Degree it lost its value, actually. Because everyone's just doing, I don't know, there was a, and there's always like a wave of, oh, everyone's going to go and do um, management and marketing. And then, then you have hundreds of, of students finished with, I don't know, marketing and management course, and then no one's really hiring them. And I think it's much better if, if you don't know what you're doing, go travel it. Um, go work. And then you find out it's okay to do a degree later on. I actually always envied people who knew what they what they want to do from, I don't know, from elementary school. I got a cousin who always wanted to be a journalist, and then, and then he made it. He's younger than me, and and then he's so successful. And I think that's that's rare. It's not a common no. thing. You no. should not really know what you want to do when you're young. You have to experience a lot of things, and I think traveling is the best thing, the best yeah. thing, and doing internships here and there talking to people it's 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 we often think that a particular job looks fancy or it's nice to earn that amount of money but if you actually experience this job it turned out that you would hate it and yep. there's nothing worse than waking up in the morning and then thinking gosh i hate my job <laughs> okay i've done a customer service job way too long way too many years and hated it i hated it but it was like oh i have to do it because it pays my fees or yeah. stuff like that and that's i mean i don't think anyone really i don't know is yeah, you're dragging thing. yourself to work that's the worst yeah no but i don't think any that's anyone's dream job oh gosh i really would like to serve customers i don't think it is <laughs> it's a horrible horrible job and often you hate people yeah <laughs> it's it's, it's, it's <laughs> I can't, I don't, I haven't not met anyone who've done a customer service and said, I love people. Nope. No, nope. you <laughs> nope. hate people. You don't want to talk to them. Yeah, exactly. You, you start like, hating people once you work there. <laughs> you start talking to your family because you have enough of people. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. I, I haven't done customer service, but I, I know a lot of people who did and they, they hated it as well. And it was usually when they were studying, it's like, okay, as soon as they get my degree, I'm out of here. Um, but like, the funny, like you said, it's... Um, no one really knows what he or she wants to be because you don't have the experience, uh, especially when you're younger. Uh, I remember I used to think that uh, my dad used to work in IT. Mm -hmm. And I thought, man, I, I really want to be in IT as well because it's so cool because he's working on computers and talking to people and it, it sounded so cool. Um, but it's, um, it's when I did, I think, the first two years of that education Um, when I thought, wow, this really sucks uh, because I hate it. I hate the fun part, which my dad always talks about, but that's because he has a degree and he can now pick 
the job that he wants, right? Because mm-hmm. um, he's like, okay, I hate building computers, but I like repairing them. Um, I hate uh, writing code, but I love understanding how it works to be able to inform consultants who work with us. Um, but I hadn't had that experience yet. So I went into college um, or like vocational learning about IT in all senses. I had to code. I had to uh, do things that I really, really hated. And I thought, okay, well, this is probably part of the job as well. Um, I don't like it. Uh, my teacher then said, well, you're um, very talkative. Uh, maybe you should look into marketing and communications. Um, and that's what I did as well for like three or four years. I got my degree and then... I remember my parents asking me, like, what are you going to do now? Are you going to go to college? Are you going to try and get into a university? And I said, well, no, because I really don't know what I want to learn yet. Um, Because I don't have that experience because I have a degree in marketing and communication now, which would be the easy way to go and pursue that career or education. Um, But I'm not sure if I want to. Um, So what I decided was that I'm going to stop here and I'm going to start working. Uh, because I can always get into education again. Uh, So I think I was like 21, nearly 22, when I started my first career, full-time job, no education. And then I started to cherry pick like, okay, what do I want to learn? Uh, So I started with getting a smaller extra degree in marketing, Mm -hmm. uh, like a a side uh, education. Um, And then I was like, okay, now I want to learn about human psychology. So I took a course in human psychology. Um, and I was like, okay, now I want to learn how to transmit my um, uh, intelligence to other people uh, because I was doing some coaching when I had my, uh, my first job. And I thought, well, I want to learn how to be a good coach. So I took on coaching. And that's how I started filling my backpack with like experience. Um, and then I think it was like 2016 when I thought, well, I'm, I'm ready to start my own business because I know so- a lot of things about um, a lot of subjects and I'm interested in, in too much to pick one specific, uh, particular <laughs> thing. Um, I don't want to be a marketeer. I want to use marketing in whatever I do. Uh, I want I don't want to be a psychologist. I want to use psychology in whatever I do. Um, and that's how I started cherry picking. And that's how I personally think you get your, um, your true education um, just by doing. It's the same as what they say about driving a car. You don't learn how to drive a car taking your lessons. You learn how to drive a car driving in traffic, being on your own. That's how you actually learn. Um, so I think it's a good starting point, but doing things, traveling, talking to people, experiencing different type of jobs, I think that's the, the true education for, for people. And I think it's also just like, don't be scared of trying new things. And I mm-hmm. think that's the one thing that I was doing in my 20s. I was just I didn't care what people say. I just went for it. I, someone said, to me, don't go there. Why not? Like, I'll go there. Yeah. And I've done that. And then I didn't like it. And I, and my mom always hated it. Like, why can't you just get stuck with one job and like, <laughs> one place and you have to always do this. And blah, blah, look at your friends at your age. Like, they settle down. And you. It, it just like, it never really suited me. I always thought, oh, there's too much stuff to do. And, you know, like the ideas that I had throughout my life and this and that and it failed. And I mean, I go out and look back and I think, oh, gosh, if I listen to that person in my first job, they said to me, you should do science. Like I would probably now be, I don't know, I have a permanent job at university or God, well, God knows what I would. But I had to do this music me and media management and then. I hated it. I wasted my time. And then I said, not really. I waste like a lot of people say to me, no, you didn't. You didn't. Like you've traveled and then you've, you've met those people. Like you always, if I didn't, I would have that idea of music business as this like, oh, wow, that's so cool. Like I remember I used to go to the concerts and like, I was looking at people um, in like behind like the, the stage. And I thought, oh, um, cool they get to travel with the bands and hang out with them and like do this do that and like you know uh, i know it's basically i <laughs> not what you think <laughs> it's not our work no i know no, it's, not, I, it's not i did an internship at a radio station once um what I, what I noticed was that the people who were most famous because we had I think it was the Golden Earring. Uh, shout out to the Golden Earring. Uh, they, they came over to, I think, do a, a small interview. They were so kind, so friendly. They've been all over the world. Like, everyone knows who they are. Then we had these, like, smaller, like, semi-famous people in the Netherlands. They were so arrogant. They, they won an award. They didn't pick it up because they were like, we don't really recognize you as a radio station. I hated it. They treated us like dirt. Um, they, they didn't bother to say hello or they demanded to like, get me a drink, get me this, get me that. It's, uh, it was so 
horrible to see how these people were, uh, especially towards other people. Uh, so I, I was kind of disillusioned as well because I thought it was so cool meeting all these famous people, but no, that's, that's not how it works. No, like I've, I've, I've experienced that as well where actually those really, really famous people were the nicest and the kindest and treat you like a human and being. And then the, the ones that, mm, I don't know if they made it, they just were showing off and stuff like that. But yeah, like, like I think if you are not, like I've learned that some of those people are really fucked up. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's, I remember like, I probably can't n put like names, give names, but I was working at this awards show and like one of the um, PA to some really famous rock star <laughs> asked me, can you go and get paracetamol for him? So I went to get it and I, when I came back, I wanted to go straight away to give it to him, but the PA was like, no, 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 I have to cut it. I have to cut, just give him one, otherwise he's going to take the whole strip. And I thought, wow. God, like a child. <laughs> and then I thought, oh God, no, it's a horrible place to be. <laughs> it just makes you think, oh God, what am I doing here? I don't want to be part of this. <laughs> I get it. I absolutely get it. Uh, Kasia, I, I got a couple of questions, which um, I said in, in the in the talk that we had before, before we started, uh, some some quick fire questions. Uh, we, we didn't get to them yet because we are so so much into the conversation. Uh, are you okay to do them now? Yeah, yeah, sure. All right, let's go. Might take it. me longer than months. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I want to uh, hear your first uh, uh, answer to this question. Uh, I, I got a couple. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do when you are at work? Uh, research, learn. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what do you do when you're off work? Oh gosh, um, I talk. That's what the first thing. <laughs> I talk <laughs> on the phone and I talk to friends all the time. All right. What is your biggest ambition yet to fulfill? It might sound really stupid, but being able to drive a car, my biggest fear. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, what does it mean to you to be human? Experience a range of emotions. Okay. Um, what is your strongest personal trait? Um, I guess, I don't know how to call it, but I always have plan A, B, C up to Z. <laughs> so therefore, if one fails, I move quickly to the other one. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what does astrophysics mean to you? Oh, it's just curiosity. It gives me, hmm, it gives me fulfillment in my life. Like, like the, you know, my work life. I, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it gave me like a meaning of what can I do in my life. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so when, when I asked you, what does it mean for you to be human? You said experience a range of emotions. Uh, wh what do you mean by that? I think um, we're just, um, as a humans, we experience so many emotions from happiness to sadness. And it's just on every single step, like stage of our life, we're just experiencing something new and some new and, and you know it, it's and i think now from the perspective of time i think it's amazing it allows us to grow um uh, yeah so well i know that other i don't know animals experience that but i don't <laughs> think none of them have such a i don't know wild spectrum of emotions like we human it's it's i don't know like i look back at my life and i can see what it's it's just like the fluctuations of different emotions that i've experienced it's just amazing and are I, we too emotional as as species yeah but that's what that's how like i mean isn't that defining us that mm -hmm. we are emotional i know that certain people are less and certain people are more but I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing. That's what, I don't know. That's what makes us cool and unique. It's the emotions and then also, well, emotions and also the fact that we can understand and adapt and, but I think if it wasn't for emotions, like 
our emotions or needs like we wouldn't really adapt fast yeah like i mean maybe i understand that wrong but yeah that's that's my understanding of yeah i get it do you but do you think we we focus enough on emotions nowadays because if if it's such a strong trait for us like do we focus enough on it no no okay i think well i mean even if you think about uh how many um people are depressed and don't talk about it and it's okay to be depressed it's just like it's just what like emotion that we experience it's okay to be sad it's okay to be depressed and you know if we were talking about it more often then obviously we could sort it out and the fa- and i think men i think we're both men and women are both probably equally emotional but in a different ways and it's almost like it's this um it's like this society said to like that men are not allowed to speak about it like men feel like oh we're not allowed to speak about our emotions and that's why you see i think i know that in ireland there is like a um quite high percentage of men committing suicide um i know that because like i had friend i have friends from ireland and a lot of them had friends committing suicides um but i think um now I forgot your question. <laughs> <laughs> like, should, shouldn't we I focus got more on emotion? <laughs> but it, it's, well, well um, what you're saying is true, though. What you're saying is true. Uh, I do recognize it, that um, I think it's, I, I'm a, a vivid uh, TikTok uh, consumer. Um, and it's, it's a conversation going on right now on TikTok that um, if they ask men, like, where do you go when you're emotionally stuck, when you feel at your lowest? The answer usually is nowhere. We just deal with it ourselves because we're supposed to or something. I think that's the stigma that we have. Right? Hmm. Yeah, but I think, yeah, with women, we, we cry and we shout it and we say stuff like that. But like, I mean, we, I think we all experience a down time and being depressed or like, I don't know, our hormones were like going up <laughs> and down or, you know, experience happiness. And there's... I mean, there's nothing, I mean, we all love being happy or like ecstatic about something or like the fact that, I don't know, think about you going to a concert or a festival, there's a lot of people singing the same song and then you feel like, oh gosh, it's it's like, it's like if I would take a drug or something, it's, it's amazing. And I think it's, it's, I've, like when I was in my twenties, I've, I've often thought that I have to punish myself for feeling bad or or um, sad or lonely. Um, and then I've learned that it's okay. It's okay. Like um, actually um, at the end of the last year, I felt very lazy, very lazy and the need of being by myself. And I thought, oh gosh, maybe I'm ter-, like, I thought maybe, oh, maybe I'm getting depressed or something. And I thought, no, it's okay. My body wants to be by itself, laying on the couch and watch TV. That's what it needs. It's okay. It's okay. As long as you keep it under control. But it's sometimes like we don't listen to our bodies. It's especially now when we have so many like um, stimulants like phone, computer, TV, uh, this and that, and especially the phone and you know, it's constantly social media, that, 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 and that we don't allow ourselves to think about our emotions. And I, I don't know, like I've lately for the past, well, for the past four years, I've been really thinking about, oh, it's okay. I'm sad. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Or I feel, oh, I feel lonely actually, but that's okay. It's okay. And then, you know, you just pick up the phone, call someone, or you just tell yourself, it's okay. It will it will be fine. Just let yourself feel it, uh, because you can't just be happy all the time. It, it's it, one day you will just burst like a bubble, and and that will be really bad. And I think that's the problem um, that a lot of men have, especially probably our generation. Well, I'm hoping it's it's changing now um, with the younger younger generation. The more well, they, we talk they seem about more it, more conscious about it. Yeah, I think I think the conversation is is starting. Um, to go where 
it's also okay for everyone to share their emotions and to feel bad sometimes. Um, but I do think that social media, it, it could it could change it. It could change the narrative. But I think it also has a very negative influence because you see all these people being happy. You know, the, the, the fakeness of Instagram. You know, mm-hmm. Everyone's rich, everyone's happy, everyone's doing their dream job. Um, but behind the scenes, they're desperately lonely and, and they feel insecure. Um, so I think, and that's a bit, basically where my question came from. Like, should we focus more on understanding emotions and understanding how um it's okay to feel depressed or or lonely or scared sometimes as long as you can control these emotions right as Mm -hmm. long as you allow them to be there Um, because i think it's also part of suppressing emotions um and like i said uh, especially for men i think the stigma is still like we need to be strong and independent and you know we, we we cannot cry because men don't cry um which is complete bullshit um but i think i think we need to change that narrative mm-hmm. um but i'm I, I i'm very curious how you look at this because um social media part of technology is 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 giving us an option to go two ways um we can make it even more negative or we can open up the the conversation to talk about emotions um but how else can we stimulate that people understand emotions more and more because i feel like we understand technology more and more. We want to use more. We want to grow it bigger. But but should we not focus on understanding emotions and how to be human? I mean, that's a good question. And I wish I had <laughs> like a straight answer. <laughs> but I mean, going back to social media, like Instagram and Facebook, I think I don't see a way of make turning it into something positive. I think, I think it showed that um, it's all so fake. For me, I'm very much, I use it, but I hated it. I'm not, um, I know that's, okay, there are a couple of people that are using it in a good way, but there is, um, I think this whole thing of, let's put a filter, let's look at, like, it's nice, and then look at my body, it's, it's you know, I look great all the time, and then sometimes I'll show that, oh, actually not, sometimes I feel also bad, but generally then I'm going to spam you with 99% of I feel amazing. Yeah. But but because then we just see this, you know, I often sometimes I look at someone like, oh, great, they have an amazing life. Maybe I can have it as well. I'm thinking, what? I bet they don't. Like, it's, how easy is for me to create an amazing life on Instagram? How? It's how? And, and I think um, so often we probably um, when we feel sad or something, we um, we run away to social media um, and like i i really miss those times where we could just sit down and talk without people just looking at their phones constantly um but i think that's that's uh, well i don't know because like back in the days people also were sitting down and (laughs) people were not talking about feelings either (laughs) um yeah I, i just um i know that there are some like amazing campaigns um going on but I just don't know the way, but I mean, if you think about it, like I know, okay, that's very like drastic example, but um, there was this campaign about sexual harassment within footballers and they've opened up a line and suddenly we found out that this is not a small problem, it's a major problem because a lot of them start calling. So I don't know, I guess, um there has to be a way i just don't know how i know that um probably reading or maybe uh, listening to um you know some good youtube channels or a good campaign or probably someone who's famous or just speaking out about it and not in a way that it's fake but in an honest way and not in a way that they feel like oh i am a victim but in the way that um it's a normal thing it's an everyday i feel like that as well and and often sometimes some of the celebrities they do that but in a way that it's almost like oh i need to jump in that band on that bandwagon because everyone yeah. else is doing this so i think then it's oh come on like you know that's how i react to this but if someone out of the blue just have a conversation and then conversation turns into like oh no it's okay like i have sad days and da, 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 da. and in a way like well just because i have minions doesn't mean that i don't feel like you know how, I mean, what do you think? How is your, that's how I, 
I don't see any other. It has to be an honest, organic way, I think, because right yeah. now we are so saturated with fake social media that people, um, I think people are slowly turning into other, um, I don't know, applications like TikTok. From, like in like the younger generation, they just fed up with this Instagram and Facebook for me, it's, I think it's dying anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so though. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just, I think the younger generations are looking for more truthful, I don't know, images or like truthful um, way of communicating or showing their life. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's just our generation <laughs> created. <laughs> I, th I think it is changing with younger people. Um, I, I haven't been on Facebook for like a year and a half. I think it's called Meta now, right? Um, I haven't been there for a while. Um, I do like the fact that I, I see a small change in younger generation uh, when it comes to what they are willing to share and how they react to other people. Um, when I first installed TikTok, I think it's about a year, year and a half ago, um, I was like, okay, so it's only like young girls showing off and I, it, it felt wrong and it didn't feel, it wasn't even entertaining. It was just wrong. It felt mm -hmm. so dirty. Um, so I left it until um, a friend of mine said, well, you, you need to train the algorithm, right? You need to net, let the algorithm know what you like. Um, so I, I gave it a second chance and then I figured out that a lot of young people are actually showing um, their real lives now. Um, so they are um, young people who like cooking. They just start like an amateur cooking show and they tell people like, okay, uh, I've got a reel of um, uh, uh, meals that I fucked up uh, where, where I burned my meat or I, I destroyed my salad. They just show the true side of it's not always perfect. Uh, and they show the, the fact that they are human and they make mistakes, which make, make them more relatable as well. Um, and now you see that people who are flaunting and showing riches and, and doing all these, uh, I've, I've got a course, let me show you my course, look at how rich and perfect I am. They're getting more and more hate. Like, okay, you're, you're full of it, you're phony. You're... So I think that's, that's a small but good change mm -hmm. uh, towards being more, more humane and more human. Um, and I think that social media does have a chance if it grows this way. If people are willing to show their darker side, their, their more human side, um, where not everything is perfect, but everything is human. Um, I, I do enjoy when someone messes up, like, okay, so I'm not the only one messing up, right? So now those people are more relatable because they're, they're honest and they're fair. Because um, that's what we look for in, in real friends as well, right? I want friends that are honest and mm -hmm. that make the same mistakes that I do, um, that they are even uh, as human as I am. I don't want to hang around with fake people who just show off their, their goods every day. Um, so I do think it's changing in the right way. Um, but, but I think that we need to, to make, especially young people, and, and teach them. And I think that's what you said in the beginning as well about the school system. We need to teach more about the soft skills, about the soft part of humans. Um, not everything is perfect and you don't have to know everything. Um, and you also said this, but I had this, this talk in the last episode with Fans. Um, we, we should stop teaching people what to know, but we need to teach people how to learn, um, how to get your information. How do you grow as a person? And how do you, how do you get information? How do you confirm sources? How do you start relationships? That's what we need to focus on. But also going back to the subject of like generations, I think, I think it's probably changing slowly um, because when I talk to um, um, guys that are uh, my age, um, they're very close. If you start talking about emotions, you think they, they have to be either really drunk or on drugs and then mm. they open up. And then I have actually the most amazing conversations with them um, about emotions. And I love them. And I think they love it too, that they, it's almost like they can release their, like, you know, breaks and, and, and just let it go. But when I talk to guys who are 10 years younger than me, it's almost like I'm amazed how openly they talk about their feelings. And the other day, like I'm part of Discord for like one of the crypto, one of the guys just wrote, guys, one of the girls start talking to me. It's not normal. Oh my God. And I thought, wow i've never seen a guy <laughs> wrote like this it's it's almost like probably a lot of young guys feel like that and then everyone's like you know good luck and, la, la, la. and i thought that's amazing that's amazing <laughs> it's it's a it's a silly th i mean it shouldn't be i shouldn't even say it's a silly thing it's a it's an honest admission of the guy that feels like i have problem talking to girls 
And I'm amazed that, you know, one of the girls is talking to me. And it, I just feel that the new generation, the younger generation, it's openly talking about. And I think it's amazing. It's so refreshing. I find it so refreshing that it's almost mm. like I think, wow, why can't my generation be like that? Because we, I don't know, I think we grow up, um, you know, the rise of the internet and then um, so the access to music and then newspapers and stuff like that were um, was was better. And then the social media where, oh, wow, you ha you can stalk people and see like what they are doing. And then yeah. people are like, oh, wait, people are watching me. So I have to adjust how people look like, you know, the, the vision of my life and, you know, take a picture from this angle because I look much better and then it, it's just distorted and we start thinking oh my life is not that way so mm -hmm. something's wrong with me or you know I don't have a boyfriend like that or a girlfriend like this so something's wrong with me and we start pretending we start pretending to be someone else on the internet and I think I think um the Instagram and then uh, Facebook was just a bunch of fake fake accounts I, I mean, we there are real human beings. Like the the names might be correct, but the the perception of some of the people are, you know, like you, you meet someone and you were cause. I mean, you I don't know if you were doing, but I'm guilty of that. You meet someone and you go on Instagram, be like, oh, okay. You scroll through a couple of pictures and you already paint a vision of that person. Oh, I bet they are like this and that. Like right now, when I go on social media and I see that someone is posting selfie every day i think automatically low self-esteem yep. but i don't know anything about this person anything but i presume low self-esteem and i can't help it <laughs> i can't <laughs> help it and then you know and sometimes you meet those people and you think oh wow you're completely different yeah it is, so yeah yeah but it's it easy to be to to be something online because uh, it's hard to verify um, and people are attracted to successful people. Um, so it's it's easy because you're not confronted in real life. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that that's what social media changed. That um, if I were to portray myself as super successful um, and I were to be picked up by media, then I would maybe be interviewed on TV or, or be in a newspaper where people would see I would be fake because it's for, for them it's it's very easy to, to see through it and ask two or three questions and they would know that I'm phony and I'm just a regular guy. Um, but now with social media, I control what I show people. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you've seen so many examples and also so many people debunking it that um, they they hire a car um, and then they, they take a selfie and like, oh, look at me, I've got a Ferrari. And I'm like, oh, wow, you're so successful. I want to be like you. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to follow every, everything you do. But they're not successful. But it's so easy to manipulate what you look like. Um, and I think social media gave us more power, but we we are misusing it on a, on a massive scale. Yeah, no, exactly. And it's, 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 yeah, it's almost like I watch it now just to see, oh God, <laughs> like I'm guilty of that where I just go and like, especially um, when I'm following a couple, uh, couple um, influencers in Poland, because at the beginning I was doing this thinking, I don't live in Poland. Let me see how life is in Poland. And I had this I was disillusioned how it looked like because it doesn't look like that. People don't live like this. They just, I don't know, people who are rich or I don't, I don't even know if they even have that in their life. And it seems like they were always happy and traveling and partying and, and you know, um, wearing designer clothes and like expensive cars. And then you think, well, is that really true? Not really. And it's, it's, yeah, it's it's a it's a wrong image, wrong image, and then imagine someone who is very young and um, and has to deal with that, grow up and think, oh, I don't look like this. And how many times women done a cosmetic surgeries because they want to look like because it looks good on Instagram? It's yeah. really sad. That's what they, makes us it, insecure, right? It's very sad, I think, when you start yeah. when you start changing your body for selfie on Instagram. I think that's where you see this, this person needs help. Like it's a mental like problem. It's, it's, they probably felt and down and, 
it, it, yeah, it just I think it got out of hand a bit, yeah. out of control, and it's uh, it's it, I think it's a big issue, and I and I'm glad that young people are turning away from this, and then this whole Web 3.0. I don't know how it will change this, but I I don't know. I really hope that one day I'll probably remove Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> Facebook, I just keep to talk to people, but generally I don't, I think it's just ads. And and Instagram is still turning in the same way where you just see um, ads all the time. And like, it's supposed to be organic and showing your life, but now it's just turning into ads. And then yeah. some, I had this discussion with like this PR from Poland, this PR girl was like, yeah, but people put a lot of efforts into promoting stuff on their posts. I'm like, but people do really don't want to see that. They can go and watch TV with ads. People wanted to see something that is real. Yeah. And I mean, I'm guilty of that. I wanted just to peek on someone's life. And now I'm just seeing, I don't know. Advertising tissues or something like yeah. <laughs> I don't care about that, and then I'm not interested in this. Like it's it's I can I don't know go and watch TV or listen to radio if I wanted to do this. Yeah, if uh, we want commercials, we've we've got the old media as well. <laughs> so it will be quite interesting where um, Facebook or whatever Meta will. I, I really hope um, that they won't be the biggest players in mm. this new emerging technology. Um, I really hope so. Yeah, I, I fear the same, but they do have the biggest budget and I think that they are able to purchase the smaller ones if they become a threat. Um, but it's, it's really up. I think that's the, the, the biggest possibility of web three is that we can like restart in a way and take more control. Um, so if we as humans and, and, you know, the emotional beings that we are, if we decide that enough is enough and we want to go back to what they supposedly started with because that's what facebook said we want to connect people who are you know not in the vicinity of each other um you know broaden their world um if that's truly what they want then now we have the chance to take back the power and create genuine content um show the actual lives that we live um so we do have that opportunity but it's up to the people who create the content and who who have uh, the platforms to to go that way um, I'm curious how that develops because I really don't know. I, I don't know where that's going to go. I mean, that's why I like, I got into Discord <laughs> lately because I think mm -hmm. it's just pure and simple. Yeah. People can have a conversation there. And um, and it's just connecting people. That's, 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 and sometimes the moment that it starts to get bigger, they just turn it into, oh God, this thing and then marketplace and then da 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 and then um, other stuff. Um, Oh god. Everything okay? No, I'm losing my connection. <laughs> <laughs> you see me? I still see you and we still hear you. It's all it's Okay, all then let's continue. It's <laughs> no just worries, showing no me worries. lost my connection. <laughs> no, you're still here, no worries. <laughs> okay. Just... But no, I think I think you're right. But I think the, the the platform also like steers us a certain way because we're we're in one of the same discords. Um, which is where uh, we share uh, information, we share knowledge, we connect with people, which is what you would do in real life as well. Uh, but things like Instagram, Instagram is a platform for sharing photos and people are not interested in regular photos. Like if I take a selfie right now, people will be like, okay, cool. So you're behind a laptop. Well done. They want to, sh they want to see cool things. Um, so in the beginning, people who used to make photographs, they had the platform. Because now, uh, if you are a, a photographer, and even if you're like an amateur photographer, um, you would share your images with a very small audience, maybe just your family members and a couple of friends. Now, people could see your images, uh, professional photos, pictures of nature, uh, maybe even, even pictures from space that would be interesting. People want to be um, intrigued and people want to see interesting things. Actually, I'm, I'm reading a book right now, uh, The 48 Laws of Power, where um, it explains how people are um, attracted to mystery and things that they want and cannot have or feel that they cannot have. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what you said, like people um, adjusting their bodies to be on Instagram. And then you have young people who think like, oh, wow, she or he is so perfect. I want to be like that person. So they start actually modifying their bodies as well. Um, and what people are exposing, especially on TikTok right now, is that a lot of images have so many filters and apps like layered on top of it that if you remove them, people look regular. 
mm-hmm. but you have people actually uh, adjusting their bodies um, to be the like the people who are using filters who are who are not actually like that um, so people are damaging themselves to be like that perfect picture but the person behind that picture is anything but perfect um, and is usually depressed seeking attention so it's really it's really sad uh, to see that so I, I do hope that things like like discord and and things on the web 3 um, are gonna create actual relationships and like from from real people because we're, we're in the same discord we talk to a lot of people those are actual people um, yeah. and and they they are not perfect but they are nice they're relatable they're open they're kind um and and i hope that we start getting attracted to those kind of traits rather than someone with a, a fancy car and a big house which in most cases isn't even theirs no it's it's uh, i remember when facebook first came out and I've met so many people through it. I've met, like one of my best friends from LA. I remember he's doing, um, he's a street artist. And I saw his art and I just messaged him on Facebook and we just started talking. And when I went to LA, um, I almost spent every day with him and his girlfriend, like, you know, him like helping him out in his garage. And like he got me into, um, um, I don't know if you know Obey. He's a street artist, um, quite uh, big in the state. From the same brand, or yeah. So he yeah. used to be his assistant. So he got me like three or four week internship there, and I was like, okay, cool. So it, it's almost like, and we are still friends. So I that was positive. I've met so many people through there, um, and I feel like now with Discord, like I've met so many cool people, and the fact that you know we have those weekly roundup in that bound of insiders and we can all talk about um i don't know our struggles or you know like our thoughts and everyone is welcoming and helping i think it's amazing i see almost like the big like the same thing that happened with facebook what's happening now yeah and and you know it's just the communities like some of the other servers that i'm in like the communities are so welcoming and any topic that you talk about there's always someone who's willing to discuss that with you and i think it's amazing and i think you know it's okay to meet people online like you can probably meet so many cool people online and then you can turn i don't know you you know some some of the stuff will turn into friendship that will last ages like it happened for me um but yeah it's a i just see the collapse of (laughs) i just i just really hope so (laughs) Like, I just feel like it's inevitable. I, I don't know how they can turn it into something good. I don't think young people trust them. I don't trust them. Like, like you know, I'm moving slowly to Telegram. Uh, Instagram is just to, I don't know, look at people, what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like I'm going there. Like, I will admit, I'm go there. And then I look at all those perfect pictures and I think... Oh God, I feel so much better about myself. It's almost like I'm, I'm thinking, um, you know, how in the beginning you think, oh, they have such an amazing life. Now I think, oh gosh, oh, you're really doing <laughs> this. <laughs> it's almost like I think, I think better of myself, which is really bad. Yeah. But it, it turned, this platform has turned for me as like boosting my self-esteem because I am not doing this. Like, yeah. like a few years ago, I removed everything from Instagram. I'm not saying that everyone does that because there are really a lot of cool people who are using this um, as a way of communicating what they're doing or sharing cool photos, which are not constantly their selfies or, hey, look at my amazing life or the post that I've done or like I'm having a great time with my friends. And to be honest, when, you know, how many... <laughs> times like you went to party and it was boring everyone was on their phone and then pictures from the party look like you had a time of your life <laughs> it's yep. it's a uh, yeah so um, i guess for me it's it's a great shift i hope i hope um yeah i hope that more and more people will turn their back on that type of social media because it's not good for us it's not good no no, no we need to be more and more open and more and more humane and i i hope that the era of like fakeness is is gone and we can start building relationships and i think that the new platforms really really do support it i i hope so i mean i do like i mean lately i got into twitter but i do like it because it's almost like it's a short 
news for me. Like I, I can see, okay, da, 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 da. like I needed to get it because it's it's like oh some of the stuff. Like I was tired of not having account and googling it and like oh Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> like I might just get an account and don't have to write anything in it, but just follow. But you know, anything that gives you a value um, is good. But just um, you know, same thing YouTube. You can follow people who you just follow their lives. It's yeah. It was so weird because yeah, back in the days in YouTube, there was a lot of people just showing a day in my life, and then you follow it because oh wow, you have such an amazing life. And I think it's also in our nature. Um, the fact that we want to watch other people's life, like yeah. we, we love it. <laughs> I think. We're curious, like you know, yeah, we're like, curious oh, what other people does, are doing. Yeah, like you're not gonna really watch a day in the life of someone who is poor. Yeah, this is not really interesting for us. It has to be either shocking, shockingly poor, or like really bad situation in like country that has I don't know. I don't, I don't know, but like, like at <laughs> war or something, or it has to be super rich. There's nothing really mm. in the middle. Like we just love, same thing, like why we love reality shows. But I think now, I don't know if the reality shows are even big anymore. Mm. Love not, Island, not so much, Love no. Island is big in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's also because it's scripted in a way that we we are intrigued, right? Yeah, it's not really because if you if you send a bunch of people to an island, that's not what's going to happen. <laughs> no, they will kill each other there. Yeah, probably. Yeah, they're like, you know, it's <laughs> I would probably <laughs> most of them, but yeah, it's I think well, that's why I'm like quite excited about. I think yeah, so we um, we probably like similar age. Um, you know, we grow up with the rise of social media. Uh, well, no, like rise of the internet and then social media. And now we're like, okay, this is die dying, hopefully, <laughs> some of them. <laughs> and now we have this crypto web 3.0 and other stuff, which is amazing. I think and it's probably going to be faster than we think. Yeah. Yeah, because so much is already happening out there. Yeah, so... Um, I mean, like even going back to this YouTube. So if you have a, um, I lost my plot there. <laughs> so I'm going back to what I was supposed to say. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. So with the YouTube, like you have those accounts that they just show their lives, which is completely doesn't really bring you any, like doesn't really give you any value in your life. Or you can follow yeah. some people that do bring value, or you learn stuff. Like there's so much stuff that you learn every day. I learn something. I don't know. Like lately, I'm. Obsessed with watching interviews with Vitalik, the uh, co-founder of Ethereum. I just think, I just think it's amazing that a person like that is considered a, I don't know, rock star, and everyone's yeah. following them. It's, it's a, before it didn't happen that a nerd was known and cool. Now he is. Everything he says, people just retweeting, following him, and I think it's amazing. It's amazing because he's, he's so smart <laughs> and intelligent and he has actually something to say and i mean i know that a lot of um astronomers hate elon musk but i think he's also the one who has something to say like you know he's been through he's done like amazing stuff he's done and i think he also talked openly about his failures which i think it's amazing um, so there is a lot of people that have something to say and they use platforms in a good way. Maybe not Elon Musk when he tweets about Dogecoins. <laughs> <laughs> what is, but what is your, what is your take on him? Like going to Mars and stuff is, is that where we, where we as humans want to go? Just kind of like look in that direction. I guess so. You can't stop this. I think, <laughs> um, I don't know if it's going to be as fast as he predicts because he always, um, over predicts stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I guess that's how it is. Like you can't, people are like, we as humans, we are curious about a lot of things. That's why like this whole point of science. Um, and I think it's only a natural way that, you know, we're gonna, we want to, we've been to the moon, we're probably gonna come back there. Uh, and we want to visit other planets and I don't know how it will work out with, um, living on Mars. <laughs> I don't know if some, I mean, there are probably some people that will want to. I don't, I necessarily 
food and uh, all of I'd rather stay here this. For um, but, but imagine that um, in your lifetime, you, um, you can't afford to go into space. Hmm. Not necessarily, I don't know, that far as the moon, but imagine being able to see the earth from space. I think it's mind-blowing. And obviously now it's quite expensive. I know that some million or maybe one millionaire went up to the International Space Station. He yeah. paid the Russians. So I don't know how many millions, but um, it is quite expensive. But, you know, SpaceX makes it cheaper. The fact that we have reusable rockets, how cheap that is, you know, it's it's it, that's the most expensive parts of of the rockets. And suddenly you can reuse them. It's like imagine flying somewhere and every time you have to destroy a plane. The plane <laughs> thing is yeah. just <laughs> so expensive. expensive. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's inevitable we will we will go to Mars. I don't know when. No one knows. <laughs> but probably gonna um, happen, it depends how fast they're gonna build those starships and I mean, there's already Tesla going on. I don't know if it's <laughs> orbiting there, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, I think it, it's the technology always goes faster and faster. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, and we adapt, we adapt pretty fast. I think hmm. some people, I think lower, some people faster. Yeah. But I think that's human nature. Right. Um, and I think that technology also technology is exponential. So every new innovation brings along a couple of new, that opens up a couple of doors, right? Um, and I, I'm, I'm always curious um, about your thoughts on the, the launch of the, uh, the new telescope. Is it the, the James Webb telescope? Like what, what is your thoughts on, on, on that? Because now we have like, what's it like six times larger mirrors. So what, what's going to happen with that? Like, can, can we see the entire cosmos now or? Um, well, to be honest, <laughs> I'm not an observational astronomer. I deal with like theory and computational astrophysics. So, um, but I think it's a, well, this, it's going to look at different. Um, so you have a electromagnetic spectrum, um, which part of like, it's a light spectrum. So, um, so the optical is just like very small bit. So Hubble telescope was looking at uh, the um, optical. Now, James Webb will look at infrared, which basically the images look a little bit different and be able to see different things. And it has some instruments also um, to look at um, potential exoplanets and see what the um, components of like atmosphere or everything else looks like. And I think the biggest hope of James Webb is to see one of the first stars and galaxies that has been ever formed because the light Light takes certain times to get to us. So I think the light from the sun takes eight minutes, I think around mm -hmm. eight minutes to get to the earth. So imagine that sometimes when you look at the star, you look at that star that um, how it was, I don't know, millions or billions of years ago. So if someone from out there is looking at earth, they might see, I don't know, dinosaurs or something <laughs> like, you know, it, it's a, so we're still able to see um the formation of first stars and galaxies and i think i think it will be amazing i think it's just yeah it will be i think it will be mind-blowing i hope so because i mean that technology has never been out there <laughs> so and i think i mean there is a lot of different telescopes that look at different uh spectrum of that electromagnetic waves but yeah, it's, it's, it's huge. They've worked on it for over 10 years. Um, it has been delayed for over a year because what happened with the Hubble telescope, um, one of the mirror was uh, broken or something was misaligned and they had to send a space mission to fix it. So obviously they were trying to um, avoid this and it's, it's much more sensitive. Obviously you have those like large mirrors. Um, so yeah, they were very, um, there was this, I've watched, um, I've read somewhere on Twitter where <laughs> someone made a comment that on Earth they were treating the James Webb telescope with such a caution. Oh my God, oh my God, don't touch that, don't touch that. And once uh, it was in space, everyone's just like, yeah, go fucker, go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I, I don't know when will we see the first image. 
hopefully it will be mind blowing. It's probably gonna be like the I don't know, like a large like <laughs> image of something. And yeah, it, it's I think yeah, it will just give us amazing images and insight into universe. Guess we'll see. I, I I don't know how, when will be the first image. I guess in a couple of months' time, because I'm not sure if it's already it's on its way to that position that's supposed mm. to be the L2 or something, like Grunge 2 point or something. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> yeah, something where like the. Now I'm not sure if I'm correct. No, okay, no, I'm not gonna explain that <laughs> because I'm not sure if I will explain <laughs> something to do with gravitational. Uh, uh, pool of the earth or something <laughs> yeah so does it mean does it mean that the further we can look with it the more we can look into history yes yes yeah. that's in that's mind-blowing that's mm -hmm. insane mm -hmm. so yeah so um it's you know it's we don't know the beginning of the universe like it's i mean we know that it's expanding so mm -hmm. going backwards we know that it had to somehow be created from like a small something <laughs> big bang and it's and then there are those uh theories that oh uh, maybe it's a universe within universe and they're just popping and then it will expand or maybe it will then decrease the expansion i don't know well yeah there's a lot of different theories or maybe it's a whole simulation <laughs> i don't know maybe, <laughs> maybe we're in well. a metaverse <laughs> <laughs> Like it's, it's, I don't, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's a, something that, um, it's a field of cosmology. They deal with, uh, the beginning of the universe and like the first stars, first galaxies. Uh, it's quite interesting, but it's, uh, yeah, it's not my field. <laughs> <laughs> I deal with a massive stars. <laughs> Very massive. So how, how, how does this influence your work? Does it influence your work? Um, well, um, so I deal with theory. So either I will, uh, you look at something that it has been observed and no one understand how it, uh, what happened there. So you try to come up with, um, theories and then simulate that and see, oh, okay. My simulation show that, but you can't never simulate the exact conditions. You also, you, because it's, you don't have enough computational power. So you have to choose, um, what would be the best for that simulation. Mm -hmm. So you can either say, oh, okay, maybe this is, if, if it works out and it gives you the exact, well, not exact, but similar outcome that the observation does, then you can propose, oh, maybe that it, that's this thing there. Or if something else shows up, maybe you're like, oh, can someone show me, find me an object like this? So, you know, it, it's just like new observations will explain maybe uh certain things that you find in the simulations or um will give you a new ideas for simulations or i don't know will find something that you found in the simulation so everyone else can say oh you were right <laughs> <laughs> so yeah like my like well the guys at my uni laugh like my department laughs at me because i simulate very large stars which are thousand times more massive than the sun, which obviously I think the largest star that been observed was like hundred something times larger. So they've never been observed. That's a bit ridiculous for some people, but they do um, explain certain things that are happening um, in this thing called globular clusters. So clusters of stars are just like a group of 12 or more stars, 12 or eight more stars. Uh, something's going on with the chemical compositions and uh, having that supermassive star there will explain everything. Um, and now I just simulate how we can observe that other way than just looking at um, optical with optical telescope. Um, I would have to go into very detail <laughs> to explain <laughs> everything. But basically, you know, having more observations give you more tool or more confirmation of you're going in the right direction. You can never be certain 100%. Uh, but that's the whole point of science, isn't it? <laughs> you can <laughs> never be, you can otherwise never be we're sure. stuck. Like someone said this and, you know, and someone else then saying, well, no, actually you're not, right. you're not right because this thing is, is, this thing is right. Or, you know, that law 
is wrong because it should be la la la. But we live in these times where I think in the beginning of the 20th century, we had obviously the relativity by Einstein and then the field of quantum physics coming out. And there was always those shocking innovations. And right now I think we're a bit stuck because our computational powers are limited. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so you can only simulate. So it's just like, it's constantly going forward, but you don't see such a breakthrough. So maybe the gravitation detection of gravitational waves, the James Webb now will maybe show us something amazing that we didn't even know <laughs> it's happening. I mean, the fact that we have a picture of the first black hole, um, everything that gravitational wave and black hole is a confirmation of general relativity by Einstein. So he was right like 100 years ago, and we're still finding evidence that he was right. I mean, this is but we've only now reached the point, right, that technology is strong enough to actually support that theory. Yeah, I mean, like, it's constantly going forward. I think if if we ever get a, get a quantum computing, imagine how fast things can compute. So mm. some of the stuff that you can't compute now will compute it in, I don't know, seconds or something. So imagine, like, my simulations take month sometimes <laughs> so i have to wait there then um i know like um someone told me that um they set up a simulation takes six months and halfway through they realize oh i've put the wrong parameter so cancel <laughs> <laughs> That's, like you can't really release like simulate like publish a paper saying well this is the result but actually the parameters are wrong so it's just, I think technology is, but you never know. It might, someone might come up with something crazy, but there's always something small or I guess we're probably something uh, we don't have. Maybe let me just rephrase that. So in the first, like in the beginning of the 20th century, we had so many of those theories coming up that revolution, revolutionary <laughs> so astrophysics. And now it's just something that it's either confirmation or it's changing something, but there's nothing really that is like, oh, wow, that completely changed the way we have to think. Um, there's always something going on with quantum mechanics that there are those crazy stuff or they're doing the analog experiments or, you know, I think the quantum computing might, but I think that's a long way ahead. It's so complicated. <laughs> <laughs> to, like comprehend what's going on there but yeah it's it's it will definitely um speed up some of the stuff but then there's also this question <laughs> going crypto is like oh will they be quantum computers will they be able to break some of like the like you know the securities of like some of the cryptos and stuff because they're just incredible computers if they will ever exist. If yeah, I think we're we're getting closer, but th the question is, will we get there any anytime soon? But I don't think anytime soon, though. Yeah, I mean, like right now they look ridiculous, <laughs> <aren't> they? Like, <laughs> but then imagine if we're ever gonna be able to have a like laptop that it's a hmm. quantum computer or something, or like on our phones, it, it's a uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, we probably will. We're saying this, and we, we will, knowing like the pace that technology is going. Yeah, but only time will tell, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, on, on that note, I would like to uh, to uh, get to the end of uh, this uh, very insightful conversation. Um, I do have one request for you. Mm -hmm. um, could you give us a final thought to close our uh, our conversation? Final thought. Um... Hmm. Oh, wow. This is difficult. <laughs> well, okay. Summarizing our conversation. Emotions are great. <laughs> it's good to feel emotions. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully we will uh, learn something from the young generation, not to be scared of um, talking about what we feel it's okay to feel depressed and all that other <laughs> um stuff and yeah astrophysics is the best <laughs> <laughs> awesome i fully agree um uh, thank you so much for being here today joining me on this conversation thank you for um, having me 
it was great. Thank you. It's my my pleasure. I my was, pleasure. It was very insightful. I was so scared of this, and it turned out to be fun. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> Just a cool conversation. I learned a lot. Um, so thank you for being here today, and to you listeners, thank you. Stay tuned and stay human. Thanks. Bye.